I have a personal view on this. Okay. Since I have known him, I've known his ambition. I have come to the conclusion that uh, he was more interested in power than in what to do with the power when he eventually gets it. Now he has gotten it, he doesn't know what to do with it. It never occurred to him on what to do with it. You mentioned Lagos. I used to laugh at them in those days when he was governor. I said Lagos will do an inter-local government football competition. They will, they will not be shy in calling it World Cup because their mindset, their whole view is just around Lagos. One tribe, one religion, you know, uh, people that by nature are hierarchical, hierarchical in their leadership style, the boss talks, everybody falls in line. And that's the Yoruba culture, isn't it? There are no two bosses, no debate. The boss says it, it's done. It comes, it comes into a national scene where 200 and something tribes, everybody with his own challenges, everybody with his own ambition, everybody with his own local issues, people in a system in which no matter how good you are, there are some people from the beginning will make up their minds because you are not their man, they will not allow you to perform. He got into this system, surrounded himself with the uh, local people. Is out of his element. Well, the vice, pre the vice president is not an Emilio command, so that should be one of his closest advisors. <laughs> Baba Chalawa was the secretary to the government under President Muhammadu Buhari. So when he's talking about state capture, when he's talking about just becoming the president because of power, he know what he's talking about. Because what happened in 2016 was all about state capture. It was just about political uh, public office holders gathering together just to have political power. Not because they want to change the economy of the country, not because they want to deliver real governance to the people. Because in 2015, prior to the 2015 election, um, Nigeria was actually stable. The only thing we had going there was the insecurity, which a lot of persons have argued that it was pong salt, the Boko Haram menace. Because then Nigeria economy was adjourned to be one of the third fastest growing economy in the world. But then the APC, they said no. When Good Luck Jonathan removed first subsidy, they gathered together and protested against it, which Kayo Defayomi has come out to say that that protest was sword. They knew that removing the first subsidy was good, but they did not want it to be removed because if it had been removed, it would have you know, opened up funds for more development in the country. So it was state captured. They wanted to capture Nigeria, of which power was handed over to them. And from 2015 to when President Muhammad Ubari left office, they ran the economy aground. They did not salvage this country. They did not give real governance to the people in this country. So um, when President Bola Metinibu announced the Muslim Muslim ticket, Baba, Baba Chalawa refused to support it. He supported Peter Obi. He said he will not support a Muslim Muslim ticket. And he went on to say that Bola Metinibu is not the right person for this country. Yes, Tinibu is his friend close ally but he did not support Tinibu. he supported mr peter Rubi. so when he's talking about tinibu not ready for governance he knows what he's talking about and it's obvious it's evident that tinibu is not ready for governance now if tinibu was really really ready for governance just like president muhammad Bar, they were not ready for governance if they were ready for governance what would they have done they would have engaged the people they would have engaged in debate they would have opened up their manifesto for scrutiny. They would have come out and defend what they've written in their manifesto. But none of these men did any of that. They dodged every available debate, every available town hall meeting because they don't want to interface with people. They don't want journalists to ask them questions because doing this will expose their knowledge about the problem of this country. Doing this will expose the modus operandi which they intend to transform the problem they've encountered. But they didn't engage in any of those public discussions because they don't want to be exposed because they have absolutely nothing to offer. All they wanted is state capture. All they wanted is the power. They just want to become president. They just want to be answered president. Well, they are done the president, all right? Do what you are supposed to do. Give Nigerian good governance. Give Nigerian real meaning of democracy. They faltered. They fallen short of it all. Nigeria is currently worse from when Bola Metinibu took over. Nigeria is bleeding seriously. Even though they are trying to hide it and tell you that Nigeria is not bleeding, you and I know that Nigeria is bleeding. The average Nigerian cannot afford to feed. Imagine buying gari for 3,000 to 4,000 naira. Pain pack of gari. This is a staple food that should be made accessible to all the homes in Nigeria. Tell me how an average Nigerian can feed. That means Nigeria is currently experiencing famine. 
because if you cannot afford a staple food like garlic, we're not even talking about rice. Rice is rice is your minimum wage cannot buy rice currently. So they were not ready for governance. All they wanted was power. Power for what? To answer president or to enlarge their crews and compensate their cronies. Of course, that is what Bola Metinibu has done. He's compensating his friends and family. He came in and he has created more ministries. What he was supposed to do is to reduce the cost of governance in this country. But Bola Metinibu has increased the cost of governance in this country, creating office of special assistant, increasing the office of the ministers. All this thing is copying down money that was supposed to have gone down for public use. Look at what has happened. When they came into office, they were talked to buy presidential yacht, talks to renovate the office of the first ladies. 160 million naira was budgeted for the purchase of one SUV for the National Assembly. Yes, the National Assembly needs to be compensated so that whatever bill that goes to the National Assembly, we pass, we have a speedy passage. And of course, you see what he's doing to the judiciary. These are the people that will help him to, you know, enlarge his schools and probably come back to power again because you need a judiciary to legalize illegality. That was what we saw in the last election. They are not ready for governance because if they are ready for governance from day one, everything they would have been doing is to put in policies that will alleviate the suffering of the people. But no, all they have done is to put in policies that will increase the suffering of the people and and enrich their personal pockets because I see no reason why you've removed fuel subsidy and fuel that was being sold for 600 naira is being sold for close to 900 naira now. What is the essence of the removal of the fuel subsidy? If you cannot maintain a stable pound price, Nigerians are paying through their nose by fuel subsidy and they are also paying through their nose by commodities in the market. There is absolutely nothing that is working in this country, absolutely nothing. No access to healthcare, no access to good roads. We are still talking about stable power supply. Now, what is the essence of governance? Government is meant to provide all these things for her citizens. But all these things are missing. Now, we are not saying that Bola Metinibu should provide all these things immediately for the country, but at least it should be better. It should be better. But everything has gone worse. Yes, this these problems were there even before he became president. But as a as a responsible government, it is your duty to show working to ensure that you mitigate the problem and not increase it. What Bola Metinibu has done is to increase the problem he met on ground. That is the reason why Babacha Lawa is telling you he was not ready for governance. Now it's not good for you to criticize without preferring solution. What will a responsible government has done? Now Removal of the first subsidy is justifiable. The money gotten from the first subsidy would have been pumped into security, ensure that the country is secured. The reason why we are having crisis in food today is because most farmers cannot go to the farm. In the northern part of the country, it's being recorded that farmers now pay money to terrorists to access their farmland. Those that don't have money to pay terrorists can go to their farm. That is the reason why you're having food crisis today. Now the people in the other part of the country that don't have issues with the terrorists Hessmen are destroying their farmland. That is the reason why there is no much food in the country. The available ones that are being brought to the market are out of reach. A responsible government would have fixed this head on. You would have known that this is a crisis that has been there. You fix this, improve the security in every part of the country. But the security has gone worse. Improving security also means that you are going to boost the confidence of investors to come into the country and invest. But rather, investors are leaving the shores of this country and most of them are citing insecurity and governmental policies. This thing is affecting the economy. Nigeria's main source of revenue is the oil. But today as we are talking about, the oil revenue is being lost to oil theft. The people stealing these oils are not ordinary people on the street. They are not the common men. These are governments in power. These are people with political power that are stealing this oil. People will be saying, oil is not like tom that you can see and put in your pocket. A responsible government would have seen that this is stopped. But they can't stop it because why? They are also what privy to it. They are also party towards what is happening in the oil theft industry. They should have put an end to it so that we can recover every available revenue from the oil. There is absolutely no how this country is going to move forward when part of our revenue is being lost to oil theft because oil is the major source of revenue to this country. A responsible government would have put an end to oil theft by now. 
Another aspect is for ages we have been crying about the high cost of running governance in this country. We are, we are running an over bloated governance. A responsible government would have reduced the cost of governance in this country rather than increasing it. There is absolutely no need why we should spend 160 million to purchase SUVs for our senators. It's absolutely crazy. You would have used that money to consult the local manufacturers in this country. You have innocent, you have not. They should manufacture cars for the senators, the House of Assembly members. If they cannot use the locally made car, then they should use their own money to purchase the foreign cars if they want to purchase. That was what the, government, the, the president of Gambia did. They brought him a budget to buy cars, foreign cars, for his public official holder. He told them, no, this money is meant for the people of Gambia. I cannot use it on you. If you want to drive a foreign maker, go and use your money. And project is, that is what is a responsible government should do. Tinibu has increased the number of ministries in Nigeria times two. What is the excellence? What is their input? What have they done? A responsible government will even reduce it. You collapse most of the ministries. You are talking of the Orasanya report. How has it been implemented? Collapse most of these ministries. Most of them are docile. They are not doing anything. Reduce the cost of governance. What is the reason for having the office of the first lady and you're budgeting billions of naira to the office of the first lady? What is the reason of you trying to renovate the office of the vice president and the office of the chief of staff? And this thing costs billions of naira. This fund would have been pushed into renovating or improving key infrastructures in this country that would have improved economic activity. For instance, power. How can we be in the 21st century and we're not talking about stable power supply? How do you expect the GDP of this country to grow? Nigerians are enterprise. Nigerians are doing a lot of things. All they need is the right enabling environment to succeed. And what is so difficult about rehabilitating the refineries we have in this country? Refineries that were built by the military leaders. Military leaders that we are seen as people that doesn't have good leadership acumen. But they were the ones that built the refinery we have in this country. And this refinery has gone come at us. Civilian leaders have come up and they cannot resuscitate that refinery. The money we waste in frivolities in this country would have been pumped into rehabilitating that refineries. Now we now have to depend on that but a private citizen to refine our oil for us. After refining the crude oil, how much do you think would be the cost of where? So you see, they were not ready for governance. That is why every of their policy has backfired. It's all about trial, error and experimented governance. If they are not ready for governance, they should give way. Let people who are ready come in. Oh, I guess I'm asking for too much because resignation is never in the dictionary of an average Nigerian politician. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.